Okay, another big win for the Trump administration tonight with the official creation of a sixth branch of the military, the first in more than 70 years, and big spending on a whole lot more. Okay, we'll have more on that coming up. The Space Force is about to become a reality. It's not going to be headquartered, the announcement, until next year. Over uh, $2 billion allocated over the next five years and 16,000 in personnel, mostly pulled from the Air Force, which already has a space command of its own. It's going to be something different. So we'll get you more updates on that story. It's official today. But let's get back to our top story. Let's bring in Senator uh, Marsha Blackburn. She's a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, among other things. And I imagine she'd have something to say on a couple of our big top stories tonight. Senator, <laughs> great to have you with us. Good to be with you. Thank you. Okay, so let's get to this judge. Uh, the second order that's been revealed, it was December 5th. So it was shortly before the Horowitz report came out. But it, it referenced some of the findings that were expected with that report. Right. Um, and it basically says to the FBI, we expect you to do all these things. We want you to ID the attorney, all the matters he was involved in, the steps taken by the DOJ and, and FBI to verify materials in those cases, that they're actually good and complete and accurate. Um, and also, uh, whether this attorney was referred for investigation or possible discipline, um, what do you make of this latest, uh, again, a public rebuke of how the FBI handled the surveillance situation? Shannon, what this tells us is that the FISA court is not going to stand for the FBI trying to play tricks on them. And what they have found out is that there was a pattern, and this pattern seemed to play out through the entire process that we have seen with with Trump and with the surveillance there and the four FISA court warrants, uh, those surveillance warrants. Now, here's the thing that I think people are going to be really wanting to see. You don't have just one person that carries out this. And we know that there were case agents, that there were mm -hmm. subsources, that there was this attorney. So I think what the court is going to do is say, look, if you have established this pattern and process of giving us false information in order to politicize this process, then we're going to get in here and unravel this mm -hmm. and find out what you have been doing and who all is involved. Now, this is the kind of thing that, yes, indeed, there is going to be some accountabilities. There is also uh, probably going to be actions that will be taken not only by the court itself, but I think by the other organizations that are involved. Yeah, and a, and a lot of folks are saying, listen, this is just the first bite at the apple, that obviously right. U.S. attorney uh, John Durham has got different powers, more breadth uh, to subpoena That's witnesses. That's right. He and, has and the criminal subpoenas. powers. Right. Yeah. So, but, but in looking forward to that and looking ahead to that, do you think there is a danger possibly in overselling what might come from the Durham report that, you know, it may show up and not be uh, as scathing as folks might hope it would be? And I, I think that what we will find from the Durham report is in the misdeeds and the sins of omission and commission that have been, uh, t that have taken place, then what in this is an actual criminal act? That's what you'll find from the Durham report. We don't know exactly what that's going to be, but I think everybody looks forward to getting it. And more important, I think, is we look forward to the FBI returning to being a, an organization that is trustworthy. Right now, that institution has lost uh, the ability for the American people to look at them and say, hey, we know we can count on you. There are a lot of good people at the FBI. We've had some rotten apples beginning to figure out how big this web is that tried to carry out these actions against the president should be job number one. And I know that Attorney General Barr is probably hard at work on this. Yeah, and FBI Director Christopher Wray has outlined a number of uh, numerous, a huge list of things that they say that they're going to work on, and the FISA, the FISA application process is part of that. That's chief there. I want to ask you quickly about impeachment as well. Uh, NBC News, an opinion piece there, says Nancy Pelosi was right about Trump's impeachment and Democrats were wrong. They say this is actually a victory for her, calling it a sweet, sweet victory for Nancy Pelosi, who has been second-guessed and criticized at every step in the process. Pelosi's skills as speaker and her ability to stand her ground have paid dividends. And she was right. 
about everything. Now, she's holding on to those articles so they can't go over to the Senate and get started where you're going to be a juror. This is what Senate leader, uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has to say about that. I admit, I'm not sure what leverage there is in refraining from sending us something we do not want. So what's the next move in this chess game, Senator? Well, I'll have to say I agree with President Trump when he said Pelosi's trying to execute a quid pro quo. Uh, she has no leverage at all with the Senate. Leader McConnell is exactly right on this. We will wait to see if she sends it to us. If she does not send it to us, then the president, in essence, is, is the functionality of this is that he is not impeached. So if we don't get it, we go back to confirming judges and and working on high-speed internet, broadband, closing the digital divide, continuing to work on building out Space Force. That was an exciting announcement today. They're uh, working on a transportation bill. We've got a whole list of things that we want to get done, and we, we've got a full plate. So I, I think it's interesting to hear some people say they think she wants to hold this and not send it until we get to the general election. So, Senator, let me ask you, though, to clarify, sure. do you think if she doesn't send the articles over, that amounts to the president not being impeached? You know, the constitutionality of that is something that would be a legal debate. The functionality of it is that he is not impeached. She has to send the articles to us. It is, as you've heard many people say today, similar to a grand jury when they vote to indict and then it never, the paperwork never makes it to the court. Well, we'll see what the plan is for sending it over. In the meantime, Merry Christmas and great to see you, Senator. And Merry Christmas to you.